Biofreaks on the Nintendo 64. So back in the day, back in the old, what year? 98s? Parents knew Mortal Kombat, and they knew what Mortal Kombat was, and it wasn't something that kids should be playing, and they knew that enough so that they wouldn't let kids play that. But, well, Mom, I'm not playing Mortal Kombat. I'm playing Bio Freaks. It's totally different. Still has the M rating. I rented this game once, and it isn't great. But then you're sitting there going, well, then why did you buy it? Oh, because he, oh, because, hmm. And I keep doing this. And I think now it's just a character flaw. Now it's just part of who I am, where I go out to game stores, and I don't look for games that are interesting to me. Instead, I look for games that got stickers on them. Also, I don't know who writes their E like that, but please stop. Please, we've, we've talked about this. That's not how you write the letter E. I'll beat up manual. <laughs> beat up cardboard oh this is bio freak bid freak oh look at the card saw and see here's the thing here's here's the thing and this is mostly me talking to myself here it's me talking to me let's talk let's chat a little fireside chat here stop doug listen stop buying filthy games Stop it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to keep buying filthy games. It's okay. <gasps> you know what that means. That's a rental number. Usually. But, okay. Stop buying filthy games. You don't have to. You can find them. You can ask for them. But stop spending money on filthy games. The focus of this video is actually removing... The paper stickers from this box and i thought there was tape yeah there's tape too but since we're here since we got all this out let's check this real quick what do you say 3.8 millimeter bit game bit security bit whatever you want to call it 3.8 on that side You'll notice these pins look a little different. So you see the one, this one's got a little more green to it. This one has a little more brassy yellow to it. That doesn't really tell you too much though. It's something that you can notice and you can go, oh yeah, they're different. But it's not indicative of anything in particular. So if you see two different color 3.8 millimeter bit screws on a game, it doesn't really mean all that much. Cart looks good though. No oh, cart looks great. Yeah. It's so funny too, that just to think that this is a Nintendo 64 game and this is it. And we were just looking at Game Boy games and it was pretty close to this, you know what I mean? Pretty close. So, point of the video is to sit here and watch me struggle with this. Actually, we don't even have to worry about this right now because I'm going to save this for a separate video. Get on out of here. The real focus is this little guy. And in particular, the stickers. So, we're going to first open this up. I guess I should explain what we're uh, focusing on over here. Let's find a good tool. Let's find a good, there we go. Okay, so. When you fold up this one and you go to lift it up, this one comes out all nice and easy, right? 
okay? And it's always gonna be on the right side. You'll notice on the left side, and sometimes it'll happen on the right, but more often than not, on the left side, you see how the tab is cut, and so the side folds, so there's no cut right here. So see that? There's no cut right here, and there's no cut right here, but there is a cut right here and right here for retention, okay? Predominantly, you're always going to want to open from the right side, and then everything comes out from the right side. If it were to have the cardboard secured in there, the cardboard you'd be able to get out from the right side, okay? So see how this is all one single continuous piece right here? But on this side, I'm going to open it up for you and I'll show you what we're talking about. And it takes a little bit of finagling because you have to get a tool in there to push the tab back. So you get the tool in there. There we go. <laughs> it's on a video. Um, but let me show you what we're fighting with. So see these two cutouts here? So we have cutout number one. We have cutout number two. These fold into these tabs. So you see how this is different? So this side is different from this side. This little ridge and this little ridge grips into these little tabs. And this is just a way that cardboard manufacturers made it so that you had a locking side. That's what this side is considered, is to be a locking side. So this side is not very easy to open. And because it locks into itself, it's supposed to be more structural than this side, which is just a nice, easy open and close. Okay? But on this side, once these are locked in together, and once that's locked in here, and this little jut out right there gets put in place, it's more difficult to open, okay? That's by design. They knew that that's what that was gonna do. That was intentional on their part. So as you're opening up most game boxes, just be aware of which side has the locking tab and if they do or don't. It really depends on the manufacturer. It depends on what they wanted for the boxes, but for the most part, you're gonna have one that has a locking side. On 64, it's always gonna be the left side. And you can remember because there's this red stripe with all the information, everything's on the right side, usually they go onto a shelf, they go onto a shelf like that, that kind of thing. Makes sense? What we're here to do is get rid of this paper sticker. Now, we know it's a paper sticker because it looks the part. I'm making sure I have my heptane. We know it's a paper sticker because it looks the part. We also know it's a paper sticker because if we were to get it damp, so we get a Q-tip damp, and dot it on there, you see how that shadows up? See that? Let's get another spot. Damp. Rub it on there and it'll start to become translucent. So that tells me that that's an entirely paper sticker with a slight adhesive on the back. It's not plastic sticker. It's not, um, you know, it's not a sticker like this where there is a plastic backer to it. So it's the adhesive and paper and a plastic laminated label. This is just paper, sticky old paper. What that means is we can take our heptane Ta-da! I'm digging these little bottles. We're gonna do a video on them soon. We can take our heptane, apply our heptane directly to the sticker and start to release the sticker a lot easier. Okay. So zoom in here. Maybe. My gloves have a thin layer of all kinds of stuff on them and it's making it more difficult to zoom. So, heptane on one side, see and watch that capillary action, okay? Watch as it starts to get absorbed all the way up and through. And just what that's telling us is that it's predominantly just paper. 
Okay, now, even though we are using heptane because we know that it's not going to be absorbed by the cardboard of the box as quickly, that doesn't mean that we can just hang out and have a grand time and talk about things. We still have to move with a little bit of quickness just to make sure that we're, you know, not letting too much soak into the paper. So I gotta clean this off a little bit. My scraper's a little, there we go. My scraper's a little dirty, nothing terrible. It's just getting a little too much resistance from it. So we do another round. You're always looking at the Q-tip to make sure that you're not pulling any color off. If you start to see any color, that means that you're using too much liquid. I had a guy ask me if I use heat. And he said, I use heat all the time. He goes, how about you? And I do, but I'm also hesitant to use heat in situations like this because I don't know what all is with the sticker and I don't know what all is underneath it. But I'll show you one side. I'll do heat on one side and show you kind of the differences and just what to look for. Now that we've gotten a decent piece up, my hands will be in the way, but y'all are used to that by now. I'm just going to be applying heptane directly to the underside of the sticker using the Q-tip underside of the sticker and just pulling very gently and trying not to soak too much of the cardboard. With paper stickers and heptane, as you go along, you're going to start to release most of the sticker. And I'll show you what will happen here in a second, and then I'll explain to you why I'm not worried. So you see, we got rid of a big chunk of it, but there's still a bunch left here. That's fine. That's totally, totally fine, because I can go back in here, add a few more drops of heptane, and go back, and just peel off a little bit more. Why am I not using the metal Scotty peeler? Okay, why am I not using a metal removal tool? Nintendo 64 boxes tend to be fairly soft. S-A-W-F-T, soft. If you bring in any kind of a metal instrument to here, and spoiler alert, if you bring in heat, you do run the risk of damaging and denting there we go. Damaging and denting the paper, which is not what we want to do. The cardboard, which is not what we want to do. So instead, we're going to take our plastic peeler. We're just going to sit here and slowly peel it up. Now, I'm going at a quick pace. And I know that I'm going at a quick pace because I haven't gotten my face all right up on top of the box in a while. And the reason for that is the box is still pretty beat up. There's a lot of gouges and marks. Yeah, that's, see that? So that's actually part of the printing of the box, which is kind of interesting. Um, but you never want to work faster than you can look. So as you're going on and as you're applying more heptane, pulling off more sticker, just keep an eye on what you're pulling off. These kind of removals, they might seem really simple. And you'll see me zipping through it, and you might be like, oh, that's not that bad at all. I'm just going to use some heat, and I'm going to rip some things off. But really, these are the ones that, if you're not paying attention, you can really mess up. I mean, these really are the ones where, if you start to rush, you can really hit a couple of pockets, or just a random extra sticky spot or something 
that can just really wreck your day. So this isn't a rush. This isn't, you know, I feel pretty confident in pulling up and peeling those pieces. But like these pieces, I'm not. These pieces I'm going to make sure that I get good and saturated. And then I use the tool to just roll them off. Just like that. Okay? I want to come in here and just start prying and peeling like crazy. Because that's when you run into problems. And that's when you run into, oh, I went too fast on this one spot. And now there's a great big gouge. And I'll never say that paper stickers are easier. They're just different. It's a different approach, different method, that kind of thing. And like I said, I'll show you one using heat, but the thing to remember is that when we're applying heat, and I've, I have videos where I show you how to use heat, I'm not averse to it or anything, but the thing you gotta remember is that when you start to introduce heat, two other things at play can start to modify. And one being the adhesive in the sticker itself. So if you have something underneath this sticker, if you have something, you know, if you have a sticker underneath it, if you have a tear underneath it or something, and you start to heat it up, and you just go with the gusto with heat, you might make that tear worse. The other one is these inks aren't exactly color fast. Meaning, if you start to add heat, you're going to soften the inks. As you soften the inks, you're going to run the possibility of pulling too much ink off. So why take that chance? There's a whole face under here. Look at this. So why take that chance, you know? And I'll show you these methods. And I'll show you pretty much the same way every single time. Even though this box is totally, totally messed up everywhere else all beat up banged up bruised and everything else you'll notice that we're still approaching it as though it was some you know ancient relic or something because if you get in the habit as you're cleaning of cleaning all games with about the same patience and pace and reverence reverence disposition attitude you know what i mean if you get in the habit of cleaning all games that same way you're not going to make the mistakes you're not going to you know whoops well i was cleaning too fast and and this happened. And I admit it, I've, I've done it before lots of times. There's videos on this channel where I've been cleaning something and I rush and then I make it worse. Ultimately, is the item better than how I found it? Usually. But if you can avoid, you know, those little, those little accidents and stuff, why not? So we're getting close to this corner right here. That's where you want to be careful because you don't want to push into the corner too much and make it any worse than it is. Okay. So we got all that off. We still have residue, but we're going to go through and we're going to check. 
bring some light in. We're gonna go through and we're gonna check and see. That's residue, 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 residue. I'm not seeing any paper. Which is really what we want. We just wanna make sure that there's not any paper that's still stuck to the side. So a little bit of heptane. Now you see that color coming up, okay? So that means that you gotta do light pressure. Okay. So that does mean that we are removing a little bit of the ink. But you see if we blot, we're not getting up that ink. See that? So, just a light scrub, knowing that we're going to pull off a little bit of the ink, but not too much. And then just focus on dabbing. Okay. A little bit more. And you'll see I'm just checking as I go to make sure I'm not pulling anything up. Same thing. If you start to pull up color, it's a video. If you start to pull up color, you know that you're pushing too hard. Okay. And then you can always come back in and just give it a scrape again. See how we pulled a little bit more up with that? And you can feel the difference. I don't know if you can hear it necessarily, but so that's clean. This has a little bit of residue. So listen for the difference. I'm going to do clean and then residue. See how it's a little more staggered? So that staggered noise just tells me that there's still a little bit there we go. Still a little bit right there. Okay. So just run the tool up and down. There you go. You might have to check it a couple times. There's one little streak right there. And again, just keep checking the Q-tips. Okay, and you are, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of color. So see, we have a little bit of color there and we had a little bit of color on our cloth from earlier. You are going to have a little bit of color coming off just because what we're trying to do is removing the adhesive. As we're removing the adhesive, we're also gonna be removing a little bit of the color, but try to minimize the amount of ink that you're removing. So that's heptane, okay. So now I'm going to show you the heat gun version, and then we can compare. I had to go get my other heat gun. The other heat gun. I had to go get this one. I actually like this one. The other one that I have, it's different. So, clean up all the junk we got over here. We're gonna switch scrapers because we are using a different thing now. All right, so that's on. So we're gonna heat this side. For all y'all following along at home, we're gonna heat this side and we're gonna start to peel it up as we go and I'll show you and hopefully be able to tell you as we go what is and isn't working. Let's get into it. Takes a bit to heat up. Once you can feel it strongly through the glove, you know that it's starting to be a good temperature.
Constantly moving, constantly moving. Now you'll see that there's curling happening at the top. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. You see how that's already curling? Okay, so what's gonna happen is, as that is curling, that tells us that heat's getting to that paper and the paper's starting to curl and it's, it's doing everything that we want it to, but we have to be careful because we also don't want it to burn. This is gonna burn first. The edges are gonna turn brown and then black. And then once that starts to happen, that'll tell us that the heat is starting to impact the paper itself. Why do we need to know this? Well, if we're starting to burn the paper, then we know that the heat is high enough that it could potentially damage everything else that's on here. It could damage the inks that are on the cardboard itself. It could also damage the cardboard. So just use this as your monitor, as your little canary, to make sure that you're not burning anything once this starts to curl. So the first thing it'll do is curl. See that nice curl right there? First thing it'll do is curl, and then it'll shrink, and then it'll turn brown, and then it'll turn black as it's burning, okay? And you'll notice once the heat stops, this thing's stuck on here. I mean, it's stuck, it's not going anywhere. You can peel a little bit of it, but you can also feel it starting to separate. So we'll heat it again, we'll get the tool in here, we'll heat, keep the heat moving, that's also gonna prevent it from burning, and that's gonna prevent you from burning the rest of it. Keep the heat moving, be safe when you do this kind of a thing, just make sure you keep the heat moving, make sure you watch for signs of anything potentially burning. Let's go. Once the glove is warm, you know you're good to go. And then as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're moving and removing the sticker. See how that sticker's starting to separate, okay? We're getting a part of the sticker separating, but not the whole thing. Also, and you can't smell it because that'd be weird if you could smell it, it smells terrible because all the grime and gunk and everything that's on the cardboard itself and that's on the sticker is starting to get released. That's how smell works. Hey, fun fact, if you can smell something, that means that it's in part of your body and inside of your nose. Isn't that gross? So if you smell, you get the idea. So you'll notice the paper shredded, the paper tore. That's what we want, okay? I would much rather the paper tear than the cardboard or anything else. The paper talent tearing is just another sign to us that it's a paper sticker and not a plastic sticker. If it was a plastic sticker, that plastic is gonna absorb more heat than the paper will, which means it's gonna be a, a test of might against the cardboard of the box and the sticker itself. So if this was a plastic sticker, the heat gun doesn't always work well on plastic stickers. It works as a barrier. So we'll get in here and see how much of this wants to come up. Not too much. So we'll get in on this side. We'll heat up this side a little bit just to warm it up. We'll bring in the tool. We'll start to lift up the edge, give ourselves something to grab onto and see if we can pull the rest of it off. What do you say? All right, let's go. Constantly moving, constantly, constantly moving. Get all the way down. Okay, constantly moving and wiggling. Ugh. It smells so bad. So bad. Okay. That actually worked out all right. So one more time, um, and keep your eye on this little, keep your eye on this little fella in particular, not that piece. Keep your eye on these two little raised pieces. Keep your eye on those because those will shrink um, and that'll give you a good sign that you're starting to do a little too much, okay? And we'll do a little more than we need to so you can see what happens when these start to shrink and shrivel a little bit. Um, remember constant movement. 
and just make sure that you're constantly moving it so you don't burn anything and also always be safe. Okie dokie, let's go. That right, one just blew off. Starting to curl a little bit. And I know the camera probably won't let you see it, but you can tell that the cardboard is drying out just a bit. Once I get this off, okay. Get off, there we go. Um, so yeah, so this is actually what I wanted. So see, put my little pointer away too soon. See that little line right there? That little line came from the scraper. Um, but it was a plastic tool, right? But we also softened the cardboard, okay? So just this little tool just coming in here and doing its little scrapey business because we had warmed up the cardboard left us a good little indentation, okay? So, something to be aware of. We still have a little bit of residue on there as well. How do we get rid of the residue? You get in there and you scrape a little bit like we did before. See how much of it we can get up. Just a little bit of residue on that side. Nothing crazy though. But still, overall, this looks good. You can still see the outline though. So see the outlines over there and it goes over to over here. So one more round of the heat and we'll bring in the tool and we'll scrape a little bit. We're just gonna do a surface warm up right now. We're gonna warm up the surface of the cardboard and get in with the tool and see if we can roll up some more of that adhesive. Got it, cool, let's go. But keep in mind that when we warm up the cardboard, it's going to be softer, it's going to be more pliable and more prone to getting dense. Yeah, this doesn't want to do anything at all. Nothing over on this side. So, still though, Go back to a regular, that's too far. You can see everything. You can see the big board. There we go. Can't see those. <laughs> so going back to this, you still have your residue. So if it was me, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a round of heptane and just do a light heptane, a light rolling um, with the Q-tip to get rid of that residue on there. You know what I mean? Last but not least, we got the old twofer. Now, do you see that? So this one's about ready to come off without any real persuasion from heat gun, heptane, or otherwise. So we get rid of that top layer. 9455 sounds like a familiar number. Anybody else remember where we've heard that number before? The old 9455. It's on the manual. Manual's over there. Ugh. So this one, a lot of residue. I'll show you again why, for me, a heat gun's not really gonna help, okay? So keep your eyes on this residue right here. We're gonna heat it up. I'm gonna try to scrape it up and I'll show you why. Eh, it don't really work. This is where I think you still need heptane. So with adhesive like this, when it starts to get a little glossy, that's when you know that it's gonna be 
a little more pliable. So you can see there that it's become quite glossy. And rolling it up just really isn't doing anything. Which, you know, we knew. So. But that's okay. That's why we have a lot of tools in our toolbox. Okay. That's why we have a lot of things at the ready that we can use for different situations. Like applying heptane directly to the surface, blotting it, and getting rid of a lot of that adhesive. We're going to pull up some red, more than likely. Not yet. Not yet. But we are removing a lot of the residue, which is good to see. So a little bit more heptane. We're blotting. I'm doing a blot and a little tiny pull. So we're starting to get a little bit of orange, sort of an orange yellow. And that just tells me that we're pulling up a lot of the residue because as we saw before, that's what that is. So we're still getting some more of that, but it's also more than likely a little bit of the cardboard ink. Okay. So now we're starting to get a darker, darker yellow color, which tells me, okay, now we're in ink. Okay. So you go through, you blot. And then you decide when you think it's too much. But keep in mind that we're working very close. So remember to move back every once in a while and look at what it is that you're working on at arm's length and at a normal viewing distance. If you look at games and you're this close to it and you go, I can, I can see some residue. There's some residue right here. Okay, well, that's not going to do you any good because you're not going to be looking at a game like this. Look at it at an arm's length. How does it look at an arm's length? Does it look good? Is it, is it pretty? Could it go to the prom? What do you think? So just... And this is one that you're going to have a lot of trouble with because there's a couple of things going on. There's residue. There's damage from tape that was on the side of here. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Hey, a 90-day warranty. But at any rate... There you go. How to remove paper-based stickers on a Nintendo 64 game using heptane and using a heat gun and the pros and cons of each. Okay. Yeah, see that? So the fact that that's turning darker tells me that that's actually more adhesive residue than it is ink. Interesting stuff. So... We'll get this put all back together um, and I'll clean up the game just mostly just to clean up the game itself the screws off that up I'll clean up the game not on camera because you're just gonna sit here watching me talk about blast corpse for or bio freaks oh, oh man how good was blast Corps though on the Nintendo 64 I'm sitting here cleaning bio freaks Wishing, wishing it was Blast Core, but it's not. It's BioFreaks. Ta da! Fun story the guy that I got this um, game from, he, I said, I said, oh, I, I clean games. And, and I tell people that I clean games, but I feel like when I tell people I clean games, they think that I like clean games like for fun or something i don't think that they know that it's gotten this far off the rails and i said oh i, I clean games and do all this and that and he goes oh cool me too i was like oh nice since so we were talking a little bit about different methods and then i went to a different store 
and I, I told the guy, I said, oh yeah, I clean. I was like, hey, this is, this is me. I clean video games. What's going on? That's all my stuff. And he goes, oh yeah, I, um, I clean the games for the store here. And I was like, oh, cool. And I was buying a stack of games. And I said, well, I'm really excited to clean these. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah. I usually clean all the games for the store. And there was just this awkward moment of, hey buddy, I'm buying these games to clean. But he told me that he cleans the games. And so how do you convince a store owner that I can help them with their cleanings and their tutorials and their restorations? I don't know. It was a weird kind of thing. Again, though, I'm not trying to tell anyone that they're doing it wrong. I'm literally just trying to make sure that people have access to resources, like if they have a paper sticker on a Nintendo 64 box, how to get rid of that if they need it. Who knows? They might learn something. I watch a ton of cleaning videos. I think it's interesting because it's something you can learn from other people and maybe they show you how to do something that you didn't know. So, until next time... I don't know if I'm going to play Biofreaks. I might. The future is now. America and her government are in ruins. After techno-industrial civil wars. Hmm. You're in a 3D space, aren't we all? Except for those poor people that are in 2Ds. Until next time. If you have any questions at all about cleaning or anything else. Otherwise, concerning video game repair, restoration or the likes, please drop a comment. I answer every single comment because I want to make sure that I help every single person. You can also find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Discord. It's either going to be Restore and Replay, or you can find my name, E-L-D-O-U-G, on all gaming platforms out there. Heck, I'm even on Mastodon now. Why? I don't know, because that's what the internet told me to do. Find me on those things. Ask me your cleaning questions. I would be more than happy to help. Cleaning and repair questions. That's all I like to talk about. And hey, if you want to talk about Biofreaks, we can talk about Biofreaks. He doesn't look very well. He looks like a sick man. But zipper for easy access. Boy, howdy, that must be convenient. Until next time, thank you all for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for doing all that you do. I'm going to go ahead and get back to cleaning. All right? See you guys.